in the name of Jesus, Rabo Kashiria Bosara Babaya, Lake Araba Shinder Yala Daya Lababosa, Rabendelia Kando Boseliantaya, Rika Boshanda Yala Beriantaya. Ila baba baba yandelelea, raba sabra ndelia kaza bondaya, raba kaya laba sanda rada daba shaya, leke remo zuka raba shekeli enda, leka zobrende lebe lianda, leka zonda raba kiate lebanda, leka zanda rada baba, leka raba shanda ya laba baba shanda ya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, God is good. And all the time, this morning, I want to welcome all of you to Sustaining Word Ministry, where the power of God is activated, where the angels of God are always present, where the spirit of the living God is always manifesting the glory of God. It is a great joy for us to fellowship together this morning. Praise God. Everybody is present. We have a full house. The thing is that we are not physical beings. We are spiritual beings. And so every member is present. Hallelujah. We are fellowshipping together. This week has been a glorious week. It has been a blessed week. It has been awesome. It has been powerful. We have been seeing the goodness of God, the kindness of God, and the mercy of God. He said he will not leave us, neither will he forsake us. This morning, I want to speak on a subject that I entitled, You are fearless and untouchable. You are fearless and untouchable. I want somebody to say, I am fearless. And untouchable. and untouchable. Praise God. One of the things that we need to understand, one of the things that we need to know is that there is the breath of God in us. There is a spirit of God in us. That spirit of God in us represents God. That spirit of God in us represents God. And until that spirit is taken away from you, nothing can touch you. Nothing can destroy you. Nothing can kill you before your time. That is why when they said somebody is dead, when they said somebody is dead, then it means that that spirit has departed. That spirit of God has departed from that person. When the spirit departs from you, then you are dead. But as long as that spirit is still in you, you have life. Hallelujah. And so let's look at the beginning. Genesis chapter number 2. Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The breath of life. God breathed the breath of life into man. And man became a living being. The breath of life represents God. The breath of life is God. And the life of God that is in us is what is keeping us. It is like a wind. He said the born again believer is like a wind. Nobody knows where he's coming from and nobody also knows where he's going. You are like a wind. You are like breath. Nobody knows where you are coming from. And nobody also knows where you are going. But you are going somewhere. 
You are going somewhere to make great things happen in the name of Jesus Christ. See, what we need to do is to activate the power of God in us. The power of God in us must be activated. The power of God in us must be stirred up. The power of God in you is the breath of life. And so as long as that breath of life is still deposited in this earthen vessel, nothing can touch you. You are fearless. You are untouchable. You are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. God is good. The Bible says that perfect love drives out fear. One of the things that I have realized that the enemy is using against humanity, human beings all over the world now, the tool, the gadget that the enemy is using now is fear. Fear. People are scared all over the world. Both the young, the old, great men, great leaders, great nations. Everybody is panicking. Why is it so? Because the enemy has succeeded by employing people to speak negative. Negative, 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 negative is equal to fear. And God is saying 365 times in his word, fear not. Fear not, fear not, fear not, for I am with you. You are untouchable and you are fearless. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we must condemn it. For this is the heritage of the servants of God. When you wake up in the morning, count yourself blessed. Fear is a dangerous tool in the hands of the devil. Just as faith is a powerful tool in the hands of God. And so the enemy is busy using social media to release fear. Fear, fear, fear. And you see, a lot of people don't know what fear can do to them. If you read from Job chapter 3, Job chapter 3, Job chapter 3, I see some blessed people this morning. I see some blessed people this morning watching and hearing. In the book of Job chapter 3 verse 25, hear what Job said. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. So now let's look at what the devil's intentions are. Let's look at what fear can do to us. We know about the troubles we know about the challenges. We know about the difficulties that Job went through. When you mention the name Job, even people who don't know God, people who have never read their Bible before, they know what to equate Job to. Everybody knows about the problems that Job faced. How did it all happen? For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. Don't become a victim of what you fear. Don't become a victim of what you fear. Gather faith and be fearless. Gather faith. You'll be untouchable. Because Job allowed this negativity, this negative thought, this lie of the devil. When, you, when you, you hear from Satan himself, he said, is it not that you have built a hedge of protection around Job? God had built a hedge of protection around Job, but yet Satan was able to penetrate, to bring fear. But the Bible says that when you break the hedge, the serpent will bite you. When you break the protection, Satan can come in and mess you up. So you are protected. You are preserved. God loves you. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you. The Holy Spirit is with you. He has discharged legions of angels to watch over you wherever 
you go. He said, in all your ways. Hallelujah. See what he said. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. So all this negative news that is going on, if you keep on listening and listening and listening to them, fear will penetrate and fear will begin to increase, magnify itself, exalt itself, establish itself in you so much that at some point in time, that which you fear greatly begins to happen. So God said, fear not. He said, and what I dreaded has happened to me. What I dreaded has happened to me. God was with him. Jesus was with him. The Holy Ghost was with him. Yet still, Satan found a way to penetrate and to bring fear. Fear not. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis chapter number 8. Genesis 8 verse 1. God is in control. I said God is in control. Genesis chapter 8 verse 1. This is powerful. He said, then God remembered Noah. Then God remembered Noah. If God remembered Noah, God will remember you. If God remembered Noah, he will remember the people of your household. If God remembered Noah, God will remember your children, your family, your loved ones, and everything that concerns you. Hallelujah. The whole earth had been destroyed by God. Everybody was gone besides Noah and the people of his household. The people of his household were people who believed God. The people of his household were people who did not doubt the promises of God. What God has said to Noah to do, it had never happened before. It had never rained before. And God had never destroyed the world before. And so for 120 years, Noah was announcing it that God is going to destroy the whole world. Everybody must repent. Everybody must repent. And nobody listened to him besides the people of his household. Praise God. Besides the people of his household. Only them. And the Bible says, all of them including the animals that God had told Noah to select, them alone survived the wrath of God, the destruction that came. Then God remembered Noah. God always remembers his faithful people. God always remembers people who have a right standing with him. He remembered Noah and every living thing, every living thing, and all the animals that were with him. Listen, God also remembered the animals that were with Noah. Why was it so? Because God's intention was not to destroy all the animals. God's intention was to select a few of those animals so that they can reproduce of their kind. So God had a plan also for the animals. God has plans for you. God has plans for you. God has plans for you. If God had plans for animals, I want you to know that he has plans for you. Bigger plans. If he remembered animals, he will remember you. And all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God... Listen, somebody. God remembered Noah because of the faithfulness of Noah. He did not just remember Noah. God does not just get up and remember people. He remembers faithful people, though he's a good God. Noah obeyed God. Noah believed God. Noah trusted God. 
Noah did according to the spec that God wanted him to build the ark. Exactly. And for so many years, he was busy building. And many people were looking at him like he was a crazy man. And Noah was building. And Noah was building. Noah was a faithful man. So God couldn't forget him. It doesn't matter what is going on. Just remain faithful. Just be faithful. Don't let the negativity bring fear, doubt, and unbelief. Don't let the negativity stop you from doing what is right. Don't let the negativity, the negative news that are going on, cause you to backslide. Hold on to God. He is a faithful God. Besides Noah being faithful, building the ark according to God's spec, the animals that were in the ark with him, he was taking care of them. He was feeding them. He was cleaning them. He was keeping them. He was keeping them alive. So God saw the faithfulness of Noah outside the ark before the flood and inside the ark, Noah was faithful. Right now, we may find ourselves in the ark of God. Are you going to be faithful? Will you be faithful? Oh, you are going to backslide. Are you going to be kind? Are you going to be dependable? Are you going to trust God? Are you going to keep on doing what is right? Or are you going to say that, oh, uh, the way that things are going, I don't know about this. Only believe. The only option that we have is to believe. If God remembered Noah and all the animals, God will remember you. Listen to what the Bible says. And God made a wind to pass over the earth. A wind. A wind. A wind. The wind is the breath of God. The wind represents the power of God. And so, with all the flood, with all the challenges, with all the chaos, with all the confusion that was going on, God just released wind his breath when he released the wind to pass over the earth the waters subsided when the power of God was released when the wind of God was released the Bible says the waters subsided what does he mean the wind of God Cause the waters to cease. The wind of God caused the waters to cease. To cease. To cease. The wind of God has the ability to cause things to cease. The wind of God has the ability to cause wind to cease. Storms to cease. Red Sea to part. You see, the wind represents the power of God. And this wind always submits to God's sovereignty. When Jesus came into this world, he was with his disciples. And most of the things that he did, he was teaching them how to operate. Because he was going to leave. So he was educating them. He was showing them things. He was proving to them how this breath in them can make things happen. How the breath in them can make supernatural things to happen. Now let's look at Mark chapter number 4. Mark chapter 4, let me start from verse 40. Mark 4, 40. So now he was with the disciples and they were studying him and he was teaching them. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? They saw a wind. They saw a storm rising against them. Listen. Satan has no authority over God's creation. He can try, 
but he's not in charge. The storm came, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? How is it that you have no faith? How come you don't have faith? You need faith. You need faith. You don't need to be afraid. Fear is a demon. Fear is equally a spirit. But it is a spirit of the devil. Regardless of what you go through. Regardless of what you encounter. Regardless of what comes your way. You have two options. Either to trust God. Have faith in him. Or allow the enemy to bring you down with fear. But this morning, I want to believe that you are not going down with fear. You are going up with faith. You are going up with faith. You are not going down with fear. Fear has no right to you. Hallelujah. 41 says, And they feared exceedingly. This fear is holy fear. This fear we see here is reverence. And they reverenced him so much and said to one another, who can this be? Who can this be? God released the storm. God released the wind. God released the problem. So that Jesus can use it to teach them. So that Jesus can use the circumstance and the situation to teach them. You are a born again believer. You are a child of God. You have the breath of God in you. You have the Holy Ghost in you. The blood of Jesus is on your mark. And I want you to know that the world have no answers and solutions to this problem. So they are watching us. We have peace within. We have peace within. So may we not join them and be panicking. May we not join them and be speaking negatively. Listen, ever since this thing started happening, I have never heard any news from Israel. I have never heard the Jewish people publish anything. I haven't seen it. I haven't heard it. How many people have contacted the virus? How many people have died? I haven't seen it because they are smart. They know the power of words. People are busy speaking negative in this country, in the world, even claiming that the worst is yet to come. How can you talk like that? There is life and death in the power of the tongue. It doesn't matter which station I'm listening to. When I see some idiot come there and begin to speak negative things, I turn it off. Because the enemy has also employed people to plant fear in the hearts of people. Job said, the thing that I fear most has come upon me. That will not be your portion. I said, that will not be your portion. Your story is different. Our story is different. Our situation is different. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, ah, who can this be? Who is this guy? Let it be said of you that where did you get this confidence from? Where did you get this hope from? Where did you get this faith from? That even the wind and the sea obey him. The wind and the sea obey him. <sighs> the wind represents God. The wind represents the power of God. And so, Jesus was teaching them that what you have in you has the ability to stop the wind. It has the ability also to deploy the wind. God will use the wind anytime he so desires. So he used the wind at this point in time for Jesus to use it to teach his people. Hallelujah. Mato Sakari Bahadosa. 
Ezekiel. Let's see Ezekiel chapter 2. Somebody's going to be healed right now. Somebody's going to be healed right now. Somebody's rising up right now. Ezekiel 2 chapter 1, chapter 2 verse 1. Somebody's rising. Somebody's rising. Listen to what the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1. And he said to me, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. God's word came to Ezekiel. I don't know what Ezekiel's situation was. But I know that he was not standing on his feet. Maybe he was down. Maybe he was sleeping. But the word of God came to him just as the word of God is coming to you this morning. The word of God came to Ezekiel just as the word of God is coming to you this day. The word of God came to him and said, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Listen, when you are down, God will not speak to you. When you are down, even when he speaks, you won't hear. You have to be on your feet. You have to rise up in faith. You have to rise up in hope for God to speak to you. And listen to what the Bible says. Then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me. The spirit entered him when God spoke to him. This morning, God is speaking to somebody. The word of God is a spirit. And as God speaks to you, this spirit enters into you. Just as it entered into Ezekiel. He said, then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. The word of God is designed to set you on your feet. The word of faith is designed to set you on your feet. The word of faith, the spirit of faith is buried in the word. And as you receive the word of faith, you begin to rise up. You begin to rise up. You begin to rise up. I see somebody rising up. There is a spirit in the word of God. When the word is spoken, you don't see it because it's in the form of a wind. But it still has the ability to raise you up. It has the ability to heal you. It has the ability to restore you. It has the ability to protect you. It has the ability to bring faith and courage. I see somebody rising today in the name of Jesus. He said, then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. Until you rise up on your feet, you will never hear him speaking to you. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Let the word of faith, let the spirit of faith penetrate into your soul. Let it penetrate into your mind. Let it penetrate into your spirit. Let it penetrate into your heart. And you will see yourself up there. I see somebody being elevated today. Listen to this. Ezekiel 37. Listen to this one. Ezekiel 37 verse 1. Somebody is being healed. Somebody is being restored. Somebody is being restored. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Terrible situation. Let's go. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very, very dry. Terrible situation. Dry bones. You are not dead. You are alive. You have not contacted any virus because you cannot contact virus. You are untouchable. Any virus that comes close dies instantly. Any virus that comes close to your home will see the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 
God took Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones. Let's see verse 3. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Son of man, are people going to survive this? Son of man, is any relative going to die of this virus? Son of man, can these bones live? So Ezekiel answered, O oh Lord God, you know, I believe that his faith was wavering. This one, God, dry bones, I have never seen anything like this before. If you have never seen dry bones in your life, then I want you to know that you haven't met God yet. He has the ability to raise the dead. He said, oh Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones. Prophesy to this virus. Prophesy to the economy. Prophesy to the situation. Speak the word of God. And God helped him. Because I'm sure Ezekiel didn't know what to say. And God said to him, say to them, oh dry bones, speak the word. Release the wind. Release the power of God. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word. The Lord. Hey, the word of the Lord is powerful. The word of God is powerful. Here, God is telling Ezekiel that the word of the Lord can bring this dead, these dry bones back to life. I see somebody receiving the word of God as never before this day. I see somebody being restored with faith this morning. I see somebody's situation and circumstance changing this morning because of the spoken word of God that you are receiving. Say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word. Of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. Surely. I will do what? I will cause breath. To enter. Into you. I will cause breath. The breath that God put in man. When man was made from the dust. He put his life in man. He breathed upon man. And man became a living being. And now he's telling Ezekiel, prophesy, speak the word. When you speak the word to these dry bones, the word that you speak will release the breath, the life of God, the power of God that will cause these dry bones to become living being. Let's go back, please. Five. Thus says the Lord the God, thus says the Lord God to these bones. Surely I. Anytime you speak the word of God, God moves. You see, when you speak the word of God, you are speaking God. You are releasing his breath. So he said, Thus says the Lord God to these bones. Surely. I will cause breath to enter into you. When you release the word, you have released his power. You have released his breath. And he says, surely I will cause breath to enter into you. And 
you shall live. When the breath of God enters into you, you will live. When the breath of God is in you, you don't die. You live. And the breath of God is being released this morning through his spoken word. Verse 6, please. He said, I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you. Cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. God is commanding us to prophesy to every situation. God is commanding you to release his spoken word. Because his spoken word carries his power. His spoken word comes forth in the form of a wind, but very powerful. So he said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. You see, it's not everything that God wants us to say. There are things the devil wants you to say. And there are things God wants you to say. The devil wants you to say that the worst is about to happen. The devil wants you to say that this thing is not going to stop anytime soon. The devil wants you to amplify what he is trying to do. So you can put fear in people. And God also wants you to speak intelligently. Wants you to speak wisely. Wants you to speak faith and hope. Because what you say is what you get. Yes. What you are hearing will cause you to say what you don't want to say. He said, and as I prophesied, according to how God has commanded him, suddenly, as I prophesied, there was a noise. And suddenly, a rattling, and the bones came together. Ooh. The bones came together. The power of God, the breath of God, the word of faith has the ability to cause the impossible to happen in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and the bones came together. Bone to bone. The bones came together. Bone to bone. It's not like the, 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 the hip bone came together with the neck. No. It came in a form of orderliness. And the bones came together bone to bone. Eight. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them over. Ha. But there was no, there was no breath in them. There was no breath in them. It is the breath that brings life. There was no breath in them. And so the word of God has the ability to do certain things. The word of God has the ability to let you serve God. It has the ability to keep you in the church. But there is more to that. But there was no breath in them. You need breath in them. You need breath in you. You need power in you. You need the wind in you. Hallelujah. Then verse 9 says, Also he said to me, Now prophesy to the breath. Hmm. Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the power of God. Prophet of God. Prophesy in the stead of God. God is counting on you to prophesy. God is counting on us to speak his word. God is waiting for somebody 
to prophesy to the breath, the wind. Listen to this. He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. And say to breath, say to the breath, say to the wind, thou seest the Lord God come from the four winds. So now you see, he changed it from breath to wind. Thou seest the Lord God come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these Slain. The disciples saw Jesus speak to the wind. They saw Jesus speak to the storm. They saw Jesus speak to the tree. They saw Jesus speaking to the dead. Speaking to demons. All these things have spirit. The backings of spirit. So whenever he prophesied to these things, he, he released breath. Whenever he spoke to the demons, demons are spirit. He released the wind of God against them. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on this slain, that they may the only thing that will give them life is their breath. The only thing that will change their story is the wind of God. So prophesy to rain. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath came into them. And they lived. The wind had the prophetic word of Ezekiel. The wind is waiting for you to prophesy, for them to change your story. You see, God did not just get up to tell Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind. It is what it is. When you prophesy to the wind, you are prophesying to God. You are prophesying to life. You are prophesying to the breath of God. And they lived and stood upon their feet. Somebody is rising up. Somebody is rising up. Somebody is rising up. Somebody is rising up. I mean, you are rising up. You are rising up in the name of Jesus. And stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. The wind of God, the breath of God, turned around dry bones to become an exceedingly great army. In the book of Exodus chapter 2, is somebody being blessed? Exodus chapter 2, verse 24. The Bible says, let me start from 23. 23, please. Exodus chapter 2, verse 23. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage. They started praying and crying unto God because of their circumstance and their situation. And the Bible says, and they cried out. They cried out. To God in prayer. And their cry. And their prayer. Came up to God. Listen. These guys stayed in captivity. For 430 years. Instead of 400 years. They stayed there. Extra 30 years. But this time around. When they cried out unto God. When they prayed to God. When they groaned unto God. God heard their cry. God wants us to pray. God wants you to pray. God wants you to prophesy to this circumstance and situation. God wants you to prophesy to the wind. The Bible says, and they cried out, and their cry came up to God. When you pray and you cry, your prayer and your cry will surely come to God. 
because of the bondage. 24. So God heard the agronomy. You see, God does not just hear us when we pray. He answers our prayer as well. When we pray, he hears us and he answers them. So God had the agronomy and God remembered his covenant with Abraham. You see, God remembers. He does not forget. God remembers you. God remembers you. He remembers you. He remembers the body of Christ. He remembers his children. Just as he remembered Noah, his family, and all the animals that were in the ark, God remembers us. He loves us. He does not just remember us, he loves us. And he also remembers the covenant that he established with Abraham. And because of the covenant he established with Abraham, he remembered Isaac. The covenant he established with Abraham transcends to Isaac. And it came down to Jacob, Israel. And it has come upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our master and savior. Hallelujah. Let's see verse 25. I like that verse 25 so much. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And God looked upon them. This morning, God is looking upon you. God is looking upon you. God is looking upon us. God is looking upon his people. God is looking upon the born again believer. He's looking upon even the unsaved. Because there are so many people out there that he has plans for. Just as he had plans for the animals that were in the ark with Noah. He has plans for everybody out there. And so God is looking upon them. Now when I try to look at what the Bible really meant by saying, and God acknowledged them. The NIV says, he looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. He looked down upon the children of Israel and he knew that it was time for him to act. This week, God will acknowledge you. This week, God will acknowledge the world. God knows that it is time to act. And when God wants to act, nothing can stop him. Praise God. And God look upon the children of Israel. And God knew that it was time to act. See what the message version also says. The message Bible says, And God saw what was going on with Israel, and God understood. God watched over what was happening, what was going on in Israel, and God understood. Listen, may we not ever think that God is not watching. May we not ever think that God has given up on us. And may we not think that God does not understand what's going on. He's getting ready to act this week. Amen? God is getting ready to act this week. Praise God. We have to be in prayer. And he will deliver us. I said we have to be in prayer. And he will deliver us. Somebody say hallelujah. Let's look at Exodus chapter 14. Quickly, please. Exodus chapter 14. Likadabu shakadabra katalabasa. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21. Listen to this. When Israel left Egypt, and Pharaoh and his army were chasing them, see what God did. For thus he is the Lord God. How much more it shall be. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Exodus 14, 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. He stretched forth his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back. By what? A strong east wind. 
when Moses stretched forth his rod, God used a wind. A wind. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. We have the east wind. If we have east wind, we have north wind, we have west wind, and we have south wind. God used the east wind all that night and made the sea and dry land and the waters were divided. Somebody say east wind. Now let's look at Job 37. God used the east wind to set the sea back. But Job chapter 37. Job 37 verse 17. Listen to what the Bible says. Why are your garments hot? When he quiets the earth by the south wind. Hold it. Why are your garments hot? God is saying this. Why are your garments hot? When he quiets the earth by the south wind. Somebody says south wind. Just look at what. Do you have an idea about what the south wind really represents? He said, why are your garments hot? The south wind produces heat. The south wind produces heat. And we all know that COVID-19 cannot stand heat. So let's prophesy and release the south wind against every virus. Release, prophesy to the south wind that the south wind will release heat to crash and to destroy every demon of COVID-19. Release the south wind against every spirit of fear, every spirit of intimidation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, let me just read our last scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Greater things are about to happen. I want to believe that revival is about to happen. Revival. The reason why God has allowed these things to go on is because he loves the world. He loves everybody. And everybody must run to him. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. He said, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you. To be a people for himself. Hallelujah. For you are a holy people to the Lord, your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself. A special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you. Because you were more in number than any other people. For you were the least of all people. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says, but because the Lord loves you, and because he will keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Listen, God loves us. God is doing his own thing. And we must just stay put. We must just have faith in him. We must just have confidence in him. We must just continue to trust him. Because at the end of the day, his glory will be seen. Hallelujah. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
The church is you. You are the church. Whether the doors are shut or not, church is still going on. This morning, church is still going on. And I want you to know that we are more together than it used to be. This is the will of God concerning our life and the church. Nothing is stolen. Nothing is missing. And nothing is broken. This shall come to pass. This morning, we release the south wind against every trouble, against every virus. In the name of Jesus, we call forth the south wind. We release the south wind to produce heat against COVID-19 in the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with us. It is well with us. Saints, I want each and every one of us to keep trusting God, keep believing God. God will protect you. God will protect your home. God will protect your business. God will protect your family. God will protect your children. Don't let the enemy deceive you for you to change your kindness. Don't let the enemy stop you for you to change from being faithful to God. Put your trust in him. Put your confidence in him. Remain faithful. Noah was faithful, so God remembered him. Joseph was faithful, so God remembered him. David was faithful, so God remembered him. Abraham was faithful. God remembered him. Daniel was faithful. God remembered him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were faithful. So God remembered them. Be faithful and God will remember you. He will not just remember you, but he will protect you. Listen to me. Every one of you who is watching me on Facebook, social media right now, I need you to understand that things are going to get better. Things are going to change. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Don't let the enemy stop you. Don't let the enemy derail you. Don't let the enemy cause you to do the unrighteous. Be faithful to God to the very end. If the devil tells you not to give to the church, he got you. Because church must go on. Bills must be paid. Things must be taken care of. And so I want to encourage each and every one of you. That this is the time that you want to show your love, your kindness, and your faithfulness to God. Be faithful in your tithing. Be faithful in your offering. Give your elevation offering. And also contribute towards the building project. Nothing is going to stop us. Nothing is going to stop you. We have put on the platform, we have put on the platform the information on social media. We have information in regards to our app. Go in there. And give as much as you can. Proving to the enemy that you believe God. You trust him and you have confidence in him. Thank you so much. And know that Jehovah God is watching over you. He will fight your every battle. He will give you victory. He will see to it that everything with you will be awesome. This morning. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, if you are not born again, if you are not saved, I want to give you an opportunity. Because it's a requirement for everyone who will want to spend eternity with God. If you have not given your life to Christ, you are not born again, you are not saved, you don't know if God should come today. If you go to be in hell, or in heaven, if you don't know, then I want you to make this confession with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for my life. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given to me to hear your word. I have come to understand that Jesus Christ is your son. Today, I accept Jesus as my Lord my master and my savior. Jesus,
come and dwell in my heart. Teach me. Walk with me. Protect me. Preserve me. Today, I give my life to you. Write my name in the book of life. That any time you call me, I'll spend eternity with you. Today, I declare that I'm saved. I'm born again. 